Linnell next. You're listening on Nashville, Tennessee. Hi, Linnell. Yes, hi. Hi. Yeah, how you doing? I called you, uh, I think about three or four months ago when I was going through a divorce. Mm-hmm. And I was, I had a question. Is uh, depression a thing? Well, it, you know, we're born into a cursed creation, and as a result of that, we suffer in all kinds of different ways. First of all, the universe itself groans and travail, but we ourselves groan. And so the maladies of life are part of living in a sin-cursed creation. So we cannot deny the fact that we suffer the ravages of sin, both physically and metaphysically, in other words, in our body and in our mind. But that does not mean that we give in to them. It means that what we say is Christianity isn't going to give us a peaceful way to come to terms with these kinds of difficulties, even depression, but it does ultimately give us a way to overcome them through the hope of glory, which is that one day we are going to be resurrected, immortal, imperishable, incorruptible. So in the meantime, what we do is we deal with the difficulties of life. Uh, First and foremost, we deal with them by focusing our minds on the greatness and goodness of God, who has created us for fellowship with Him and gives us abundant life in the present, which is to say that we're not only hoping for glory, but we're hoping for abundance in this life in relationship with God. And so as we exercise spiritual disciplines, a lot of those serious issues that we deal with, including depression, are alleviated sometimes not completely alleviated. We, we still wait for that completely in the world to come, but in the present there are ways of alleviating that through, through spiritual disciplines and interaction with the one who knit us together in our mother's womb. In some cases, we also have to recognize that these are, are problems that have to be dealt with medically, just as if you had cancer, you'd have to deal with that problem medically. Yes, and uh, I, I was reading. I was listening to your answer about uh, getting baptized over and over again. I haven't been baptized once, so I was uh, listening to your answer. So you saying that you don't have to get baptized over and over again? No, I mean what what you are in being saved by God's grace through faith on account of Jesus Christ alone is now confirmed in baptism, which through baptism we are set apart. So we're not saved through baptism, but we're set apart through baptism. What we're saying in essence to the world is I have been buried to my old life. I've been raised to newness of life through his resurrection power. I am now identifying visibly with Christ as a living stone in the temple of God. So you are set apart through baptism saying, Christ is Lord, and I serve Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Well, I, I, I know I done uh, backslided a couple of times, but uh, just like I just got finished reading the whole uh, chapter of Job, and I was trying to read how, how much he went through difficulties mm. and strife and all that. To I don't know to see if I'm going to... But if what I'm going through don't measure up to what he went through. Well, that's right. But it doesn't mean that what you're going through is not significant. It is very significant. And so often we ask the why question, just as Job did. Why am I suffering? Why do I have this particular disease? Or why do I have depression? And and the truth of the matter is God thunders back through the storm and says to Job, look, you shouldn't ask the question, why? I've revealed enough of my nature to you so that you can trust me in the midst of your whys. So God doesn't always answer the why question, but he does ask us to trust him in the midst of our whys, in the midst of our depression, in the midst of our difficulties. Trust me, because I've loved you enough to die for you. And therefore, there's not a single hair that can fall from your head that I don't care about it. He cares about every detail of your life. Linnell, I I have to go to break. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for Linnell for his very sincere question. Oh, Lord Jesus, be the balm of Gilead in his life. Lord, bring people in circumstances around him so that he might partake of your joy and your abundance. Oh, Lord Jesus, do this not by 
our might or power but by yours. We commit Linnell into your hands and pray that the body might function as a body and give him peace in the midst of life storms. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.